Well, all right, welcome back to Folks News. We've seen all the trash reporting on television over the last week. The fake media is declaring that Biden is now the most powerful person in the world. Hogwash. We're in the fight of our lives right now. We as a country are divided as we've never been. The fake media is pushing the COVID lie and the real issue is how the left and the liberal celebrity elite are pushing the agenda and brainwashing half the population. We're in a crisis, all right, and only one person is fighting for the rights of Americans to have a free and fair election, one where only the legal votes are counted. That's right, President Trump, who has won this election if you remove the criminality that is now taking place. I said a number of months ago that I didn't think that Biden was going to be on the ticket come November 5th. Took some flack for that, and I admit I was wrong. He's here, but he won't be president. No, not what you think. Don't put words in my mouth. Attorney General Barr has launched investigations into the ongoing mass fraud or fraud, and when the truth comes out, Joe will join his son Hunter behind bars and Kamala guesting weekly visitations rights. Lock her up? No, we got that wrong. Lock them up. All of them. Almost live from Chilliwack, it's Chilliwack Tonight! Join Barris, Rachel, and Jeff, and their guests, Dawn Lane, John Barson, Chris Fassbender, and musical guest, Jeff Moore. And now, Chilliwack Tonight! The following segment is not brought to you by Whole Foods. Joke. Where's your poppy? <laughs> oh, uh, yeah, I misplaced it. You were wearing it two minutes ago before we went on air. Yeah, it, it didn't match my jacket, so I just took it off. It isn't about that. It's about honoring the many who have sacrificed their lives for our freedom. It isn't about whether it matches your uniform. Uh, okay, okay, fine. The real reason is I, I just didn't want to ruffle any feathers, you know? I don't need that. What the hell are you talking about? What feathers? Who would this ruffle? Look, I'm just saying I'm a Prime member. I love the consistency of one-day delivery. I rely on it for everything, all right? So let me get this straight. Amazon directs its subsidiary Whole Foods in Canada to not allow its employees to wear poppies, and instead of First Amendment issues, you're concerned about Amazon delaying your deliveries out of spite for your wearing a poppy? Rachel, come on. Stop, <sighs> stop rocking the boat, okay? Can we just We're move on? honoring people who have sacrificed everything for their country and you're more concerned about shopping? Look, when you put it that way, it makes me look selfish. I don't need that kind of bullying, all right? Joke. Move on. Now, I'm not sure if I'm more annoyed by your patently pandering to your Amazon overlords or the fact that you're clearly not shopping local. Come on, Joke. How about the little guy? We're in a pandemic. Okay, well, why don't we move on? Where, where's Ollie? Oh, oh, right here, Joe, right here. Oh, wow, really bad form. Oh, and by the way, if you're actually watching the news, you're reporting, Whole Foods did an about face on that decision, so your prime deliveries are safe. Oh, really? Well, we probably wouldn't have reported that here anyway. And who the heck watches? Canadian news, am I right? <laughs> oh God, yes, that is so true. Oh no, you two, you two can learn a lot from Canadian news broadcasters. Oh no, that's bad. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Oh, oh yeah, me too. <laughs> Okay, no, okay, okay, not okay, really. okay, okay. Uh, moving right along, we are seeing the Biden transition team running into problems with the Trump administration for not opening the purse strings to funds that are normally made available to transition teams that are in the beginning of the process of ramping up the new government. Let's go to a Biden news conference right now. Mr. President-elect, Mr. President-elect, uh, Nigel Watt now from BBC. Yes. What is your response to the lack of response by the Trump administration to your win? <laughs> it's all right. We won. We're making preparations. I want the American people to know we're already beginning the transition. It's well underway. Their behavior doesn't change the plan. Very good. Very good. Uh, though, what 
if they don't concede? Uh, what if they just continue refusing? The fact is, if they're unwilling, uh, it doesn't matter. He's leaving the office on January 20th. Mm. Understand, uh, what if they don't leave, though? Well, they have to. We won the election. Uh, Mr. President-elect, Republicans are not even acknowledging you, though. You've received no congratulations from across the aisle, people you said you'd work with as a bridge builder. Well, well I, like I said, we won. But what happens if January 20th rolls around and Trump still hasn't conceded? Well, we did win, though. Yes, yes, but what happens if January 20th rolls around and you still have Look, I said, we won. He's out. I'm gonna whoop his lard ass if that's what it takes, but he's out. <laughs> Let's take another question from Blanderson. Thank you, Mr. President-elect. Really, to follow up on Nigel's question from BBC, you've been taking calls of congratulations from world leaders, Germany, the United Kingdom, France, Canada, but notably nothing from some of our adversaries, I think Russia and China most notably, they've indicated they wanna wait until the, it's clear really who won the election. So how do you maintain international credibility when your adversary in this election won't concede the race to you? I guess what I'm asking is, where do you go from here? Look, Blandison, bitch, I'm the president. That's all I'm saying more on this topic. Let's go to Hallie Jacksonson. So there was that. Now, gotta be tough for Biden, winning the most votes in the history of voting the United States, and he's being so disrespected by the Trump administration. Funds to be allocated for the transition are being purposely held up, so the Biden transition, for the moment, is going unfunded. This is without historical precedent. Yes, well, this is completely without historical precedent. What does that even mean to you two? Everything that's happened in this White House for the past four years has been completely without precedence. It's like having a breaking news icon on the screen all the time. After a while, there's no breaking news, it's just a fire hose. Well, I have to agree with you there, Joke. Can't say that we have that problem in Canadian news. You realize you're in the United States right now. I mean, get with the freaking program. How's it going, everyone? My name is Josh Bohr, and I'm the Volunteer and Fundraising Coordinator here at the Salvation Army Care and Share Center. And I want to talk to you about the upcoming Christmas Kettle Campaign. Yes, it's coming back at the end of November here. And I think it gives us a unique opportunity to end 2020 on a little more of an uplifting, hopeful note. This pandemic, I get it, it's a cliche, but it has left us more disconnected from our community and each other than ever before. And I think the kettles offer us a chance to reconnect again with each other but also with the broader community so whether you are an individual or a family or a small business hosting a kettle is a chance to get out there and and see people you maybe not have seen for a long time spread some christmas joy and have a heck of a lot of fun you can sing badly you can bring an instrument it's just a great great time so if you're in interested reach out to me volunteer at salvationarmychilliwack.ca let's spread some hope this christmas season Welcome to Insanity! It's been a week, oh boy! But the tide is turning. New investigations being launched by Attorney Barr against the Democrat sycophants will finally inject some honesty in this election. Frankly, it's sad that some states can launch free and fair elections and some states can't get their act together and the vote is conducted in this sea of turmoil. It's a national disgrace and it's beyond repulsive, disgusting, sickening, and sad. The media mob is so corrupt as an institution. They never accepted your president since 2016. And now, a week after this election, they expect you to anoint Biden as your president. It's just so twisted I can barely breathe. Anyway, I'm going to take the high road, like I normally do. And I've invited someone from the other side onto this show to understand their perspective. To be clear, I've invited this woman on many times to account for the libtard snowflake clap track that she spews every night on her program. 
What a surprise. She's never taken me up on it until now. I guess maybe she thought because she thinks Biden won, she can gloat a little bit. Love it. Let's get her on the show. Rachel? Rachel. Oh, Rachel, I am such a fan. Oh, yeah, Scene. Thanks for having me. Yeah, it's pronounced con. Mm. You know that. <laughs> what happened when they go low, we go high, mad cow? Huh? Con, you're not taking the results well, are you? Well, I'm not taking the results at all because as of yet, we haven't seen any legal results. Oh. Sworn affidavits from whistleblowers are saying software glitches in a program called Dominion switched votes. How did that happen? Illegal voting, switching of ballots, and you want to call Biden president-elect? That's laughable. Can you answer me that, Mad Cow? Well, first of all, why don't we try and hold a civilized conversation and then maybe use our first names? Second of all, there is no evidence at all of widespread fraud in this election, yeah, nor right. as a rule in any uh, American election. You can investigate, you can file your lawsuits, but at some point you eventually have to show the evidence. The evidence is there. The sworn affidavits are there. And answer me this, what are the odds that 25,000 ballots were requested at the exact moment by residents of nursing homes? That's right, ballot harvesting. What do you have to say about that, Rachel? What the hell are you talking about? What I have to say is, when is Trump going to concede? It's over. No. He's finished. He has lost. Stick a fork in that turkey. He is done. Hey, hey, hey. It ain't over till the fat lady sings uh. and Stacey Abrams isn't even whistling Dixie yet. Look, you jerk. Are you on something right now? I don't partake in anything that's illegal. You know that. Okay. I'm your guest and I didn't either. But because you know that it's not legal here, but it is legal in Canada. How do you know that? Well, I know some people in Canada and I talk to them. Really? Yeah. Where and when? Chill back tonight. In the before times, for eight years, the son of a Kenyan from the 50th state of these United States engineered a coup d'etat of the most powerful country in the world before being liberated by an orange-toned populist hero of the people. Now we're back to square one. Hello, and welcome back to another episode of Retrograde Romance. It's Melania Trump back with you again. Rachel is off again this weekend since I'm looking for things to do and I may have to provide for Baron and myself. I thought that I'd give this gig another chance. It's not so bad. Our first caller is Judge Janine Pero. Hello, Janine. What is your question? Oh, hello. I appreciate you taking my call. I just wanted to say it's an honor to speak with someone so close to the president. I'm one of his biggest supporters. I've even had one of my Mexican housekeepers fired for trying to take down all my posters of him in my bedroom. Now I just kneel on and pray to the shrine instead. So I'm just wondering, woman to woman, how is your relationship with Donald going these days? Oh, things are a little tense around the White household lately. My feet are a little sore from all the eggshells I've been walking on. And sadly, he isn't talking to me since I told him that it would be in good manners if he conceded in this election. I did find him in a fetal position on the bathroom floor and a bag of Cheetos last night, so I'm, I'm rethinking this whole marriage. I understand it must be hard for you. Maybe you need some time away. No one would fault you. I suggest a nice long vacation far away from all of this. Are you after my husband? No, no, <laughs> no. I'm only thinking of you. Yes, well, that does sound like a good idea. But who will take care of him? 
not to worry. He's got some fox and friends. I'll just be his companion. Make sure he's fed and bathed, preparing him for victory, that kind of thing. I know that dating a married man is like driving a company car. It'll never be mine. <laughs> That's okay. I don't care. He's probably going to jail anyway. And now we're going to James Carville. James, welcome to Insanity. How are you feeling about these narrow margin wins by your man Biden? What happened to the blue wave? Come, come, come. Thank you again for having me on your show. It's so good to be here. Now, <laughs> there's an old saying in the South, if you get bitten by a crocodile, it's best not to go moaning about your cholesterol count, <laughs> if you know what I'm saying. Your, your man lost, okay? I have no idea what that means. Look, I'm a respected journalist and I'm totally impartial here, so don't try to paint me with any sort of brush. You Clinton-loving son of a gun! But I will point out that your side predicted a blue wave, increasing House numbers, taking the Senate, and an overwhelming electoral win. As it stands, we're still counting votes and there's a big evidence of outright fraud in Philadelphia. What about that? Well, there's no more fraud in Philadelphia than there is in Pennsylvania. Uh, 1600 Pennsylvania Ave, that is. Oh, 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 low blow. Okay, let's move on. Suppose the court challenges don't stick and the vote holds. And I'm not think saying we're there yet. This is anybody's presidency. How does the Biden government with such a tepid win? Well, Colin, more votes were counted for Biden than any other presidential candidate in American history. Well, we don't know right. that until the recounts and the outcome of the court challenges. You know that. Well, I know no such thing. These recounts are are all nonsense, okay? We, we won in Arizona, we won in Georgia, and we are flipping red. To blue, all right. Now you guys, you you never won the popular vote. Uh, the vote is what they call that in other elections. In two elections, now he won outright. You have seventy million people that voted against the status quo, huh? No, no, that is wrong. I would argue that Trump is the status quo. We had 77 million people vote against that. Okay, okay. Well, what do you say to that 70 million that want change? How does Biden govern to that disenfranchised group? Well, Tom, what we have here is a failure to communicate. Now, now some men aren't going to get it. Now, most women, it seems, did get it. Now, they voted renoundingly and resoundingly and all other words that I can think of for our man Biden. And that's all there is to it. Now, you're going to have to live with that. Well, I don't like it any more than you do. Thanks, James. We'll be back. Hey, welcome back to Chilliwack Tonight. I'm Jeff Edwards, sitting in this episode to bring you a little bit of a musical interlude. And this week with an artist by the name of Jeff Moore, who's a country artist. Welcome to the show, Jeff. Hey, how are you doing? Tell me about this. This is really quite an exciting night for you, isn't it? So far, so good, yeah. Well, isn't this like your first single ever? This is my first single, uh, first opportunity ever writing a song and uh, there's been a lot of people that have been behind me to help bring this to where it's at right now so it's uh, pretty exciting. Yeah, so so tell me about it. How long have you been actually playing music? Well, um, since I was young, started out with piano, moved on to uh, high school, played drums up until my uh, mid-20s, mm -hmm. picked up a guitar, started playing through to where we are right now. Uh, it was up until about two years ago that uh, I had a good friend of mine ask me to come up to the microphone for a open mic and it's the first time I'd ever been up and uh, scared as heck and uh, it's all been going from there. 
And why country music? What, what, because you could have gone in many, many musical directions. Why country? You know, I have so many genres that uh, I, I have interest in, from rock and roll to classic. But, uh, you know, with country music, it's, it's just something from the heart that I feel. Um, it's all about, uh, you know, good stories and, and family and, and uh, you know, people you love. And, uh, you know, it just felt good to do stuff like that. And there's something about country music and it's playing real musical instruments in the air too, right? Absolutely, yes. Yeah. And so, so family and uh, those kinds of issues work into your songs? Well, um, for the most part, yes, absolutely. I shouldn't say issues, I should say interests. So tell me about this recording session. How did it go down? This is part of the Artists in Isolation series, right? That's right, yes, absolutely. It's uh, part of a compilation album called Artists in Isolation 2. Uh, I was approached by um, Rosewood Studios in town in Chilliwack here that uh, uh, gave me the opportunity and this was right when COVID hit and uh, the whole premise of this album was for each artist on this compilation to uh, record a song in their own homes or, or their own places, social distancing from people and, uh, and then bring it to them to, uh, to help produce it. And, uh, so not only was it a uh, first time ever writing a song, it was a first time ever doing a song right from scratch with help from a lot of friends. That's awesome, man. And this is your very first media interview, so I want to congratulate you on that because <laughs> uh, I think you did really, really well. From the album Isol Artists in Isolation, this is Jeff Moore from Chilliwack Tonight. Thank you. Got way 
wailing on the radio, cold beer in the hand. This day is up for grabs. We got gasoline on the fire. As the world stops for a while, too many times I wish you were back home. This old road ain't the same to ride alone. Now that you're gone. Thank you so much, guys. Well, that's a wrap for this week. Such turmoil only a week after what is a pretty clear-cut win for Biden and Harris. Pretty disheartening. Yeah, well, it is if you're a libtard, a pinko, a snowflake. Uh, what? What? What's, what's the problem, Rachel? <sighs> Cat got your tongue? What are you talking about? Oh, don't tell me you're one of them. You're not one of them. Hell no. But I caught your little interview on insanity tonight. Mm. I don't know why you torture yourself like that. The guy is a total con. Yeah, well, I had to just see for myself. I wanted to try and start to see whether or not we could get some sort of dialogue going. And, and I think it just has to start somewhere. Yeah, well, it ain't starting on cable news. Ugh. That's for sure. But where do you think it should start then? Comedy. I mean, you're a joke. That's true. This whole thing's a joke. Mm. Chillax now. Thanks for watching Chillax tonight. Have you had enough politics? I know I have. Let's get back to real life. I'm going to put on my mask and do some grocery shopping. This third wave's leading to another run on toilet paper.